Our Lola looked after my brother and me growing up while my parents were busy with work. My brother and I witnessed a lot of fights between my parents. In the many times my mom attempted to leave home, we kids would end up crying and begging her to stay. My dad was more intentional to drive us to Antipolo to catch sunsets and would take us to the bookstore to buy his books. My dad was the good cop, while my mom, more distant and critical, was the bad cop. Growing up in a supposedly Christian family and receiving Jesus as my savior at age nine, I thought I secured my ticket to heaven and therefore had a license to live my life the way I wanted. With my dysfunctional relationship with my mom and the trauma of my parents' discordant relationship, I rebelled in high school. At 15, I looked for attention and affection I did not feel at home and kept an immoral relationship on one hand. While on the other hand, I regularly attended Sunday church, served in church choir, and did well in school. I was spinning separately the divergent plates of being moral and immoral in my double life. Fast forward four years into my own marriage, I found myself in my mom's shoes, my two young kids witnessing our frequent marital arguments. Emotional scars were reopened and new wounds surfaced. I complained to God about my relationships and asked him, why would you let me suffer? When I saw my situation not changing, I explored the path of ending my marriage, thinking this would free me from misery. When I told my parents about my plans to seek an annulment, my father lovingly asked me, if you pursue annulment, how then are you different from those who do not know Jesus? This awoke me in a realization that I was called to be different. Para akong nabuhusan ng malamig na tubig. This plate-spinning performer finally broke down with shattered relationships in my brokenness, I cried to God, Ayoko na po, Lord, ang sakit. But by God's grace, through His word, God taught me lesson one. I was not designed to perform a solo act because I was not the author of my relationships with my parents, children, and in my marriage. I need Him absolutely in every way. In September 2020, CCF started the sermon series called Motivate. I learned that God designed families and the only way for these relationships to thrive is when we follow God's design. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. I memorized this as a child, but this time I realized it was a command made by the designer of families. God showed me that Christianity meant nothing if I did not obey him. I saw my disobedient heart, asked forgiveness from God, and with his help, forgave my parents. Soon, I came across a webcast from the Praying Wife Forum on God's promises for a hurting wife. God revealed to me that he hates divorce and that marriage was a covenant no one is to break, not even I. Feeling entitled, I grumbled to God with discontent when in fact, I was, the sh why I was a short-sighted, self-focused rebel who left God out from the picture. I believed I was wronged, and the only person to blame was not me. But the truth was, my sinfulness contributed to ruin in my relationships. I felt so unworthy to be his child, but gently, his unconditional, steadfast love pursued me, a sinner, 28 years after I first accepted Jesus as my Savior, I surrendered my heart and recommitted my life to Him as my Lord, my boss. I started watching sermons every Sunday, underwent deliverance, and started to have weekly devotions with my children, who, by God's grace, accepted Jesus as their Savior in 2020. Praise God. Lesson two. Uh, do not give up on your marriage. As Jesus filled my heart with his love, he emptied it of anger, unforgiveness, and unhappiness. 
He allowed me to see my beloved earthly husband through the eyes of faith. I report to you that God has blessed me with a husband who takes care of his family. He wears his hats well as he strives for excellence in his profession and is an affectionate, loving dad. I admire his commitment to protect and provide for his family. His positive influence inspires our children to aspire to be like him one day, serving God by helping people get well. That's my beloved earthly boss. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus empowers me to be different, walk and talk different and see different. Through him, I can walk by faith and not by sight. Even as I wait for my other relationships to be restored, I am blessed that I am close to my heavenly bridegroom, Jesus, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5. By his grace, I am learning to honor him through obedience to submit to my husband and honor my mom. Lesson three, serve him with gladness. Psalm chapter 27, verse 14. Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage, and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait for and, ex and hope for and expect the Lord. While waiting on the Lord, I am also a waitress serving the Lord. I am a servant at the Praying Wife Forum, seeking to be a word-inspired, faith-encouraged wife, encouraging wives to be bride of Christ before being wife of man. Saying yes to God and placing my hope in Him has turned my grumbling into rejoicing. I have since abandoned the desire to perform a balancing act now that my life is anchored in the Lord. All that I do now, I no longer do for myself, but for an audience of one, my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. All glory, honor, and praise belong to Him alone. <laughs>